Hey, what's going on? It's Tucker Perry here. And what I thought I'd do today is talk a bit about my latest single, Only You, and the production process behind it. So here I've got the logic session for Only You open. And we'll go through section by section and talk a bit about um, what's, what's happening uh, from a production standpoint in each part. Jumping straight into it, here's what the intro sounds like. So there's two main things happening here. Firstly, we have this uh, vocal pad, which is which actually is the same vocal file recording as the chorus, except I've just taken the formant and just dragged it down a whole bunch. And on top of that, I've just brought in all this delay and reverb, um, Valhalla delay and vintage verb in this case, um, and just to make it this ethereal instrument. The only problem is because there's so much delay and reverb, it actually just keeps ringing out indefinitely and feeding back. I've had to join these automation curves um, so that whenever I don't need the sound, it's it's not playing. Otherwise, it just plays through the entire track. Then we have these samples. These are from Arcade. And I just slice them up and chop them around and then rebounce them into their own loop so I can drag them around the rest of the track. As far as effects goes, I've got uh, just a, this is a SSL E console emulation from Brainworks. Uh, I've got this actually on a lot of the tracks in the song and it just kind of helps glue the whole mix together. And it also brings in a few of those kind of analog imperfections that you get when working with um, outboard gear. Jumping ahead, let's go into the verse. I'll give you a little snippet, then we'll look at what's happening. I've been working, trying to focus, slip my mind that we ain't talking, try to hold on. All right, a whole bunch of things that come in here. Let's start with the drums. I've been to... So the groove here is pretty much, uh, it stays consistent through the rest of the track. If I zoom into this kick and this snare drum, you'll actually see that uh, they're, they're about a quarter of a sixteenth note ahead of the click. Um, and what this helps does is create a bit of a human feel uh, to the track. Um, obviously, humans don't play 100% in time, so I kind of wanted to capture that, that um, uh, real drummer quality to the drums. What it also does is, because the transients of the kick and the snare are a little bit ahead of the transients of everything else that falls right on the click, um, it makes the drums pop out a little bit more because they have that split second before the click um, where it's just the, the kick or the snare playing. Um, outside of that, I've just got this uh, little sticks loop. That's just, just chopped up and then a bunch of these kind of um, sounds. So that's just um, just different loops that I've chopped up uh, wherever I want and um, just kind of it just creates a bit of interest in the back of the track. I've got a bass guitar. This is a uh, Scarby MM bass from Native Instruments and then once again we've got the console emulation here again with just a um, kind of LA2A style optical compressor after it. We have Gia's vocals first come in here. As far as vocal processing goes, for the whole track, it, it's pretty bare. There's not many harmonies or doubles at all. It's just the uh, just a strong lead right down the middle. Got a, obviously again the the console emulation, and then this uh, EQ. This is the Mug Four. I really like this for vocals because of this air band here. And what we can do is just kind of like boost up, uh, in this case, 20 kilohertz and upwards and just kind of brings in that, the air and the, uh, the brilliance in the vocals. And that's essentially the verse. So let's look at the chorus. I'll give you a little snippet. So the drum groove is pretty much the same. There's a few added elements. We have now this um, hi-hat loop and then a clap that's layered in with the snare. Just helps uh, 
it just helps the drums step up a little bit from the verse. The bass is now this Moog bass. This is the Native Instruments Monarch emulation. Um, and then we have a piano loop here. What I did originally, I originally played this in a MIDI keyboard and then transposed the MIDI notes up five semitones and then bounced that to audio and then transposed the audio back down five semitones. Basically what this does is once you're transposing audio, you do get some kind of um, interesting artifacts when you're um, warping audio. So I wanted to kind of capture that without actually changing the notes of the recording. Um, so you kind of hear that it has this wobbly texture that you wouldn't get on a stock piano patch. And then you can see here I've taken the same sample, just put it down an octave just to get those low notes out a little bit more. From a vocal standpoint, we've got a bit of a call and response situation happening here. The call is this. Only you. So this is the same vocal from the intro vocal pad. It's also form and shifted down a little bit less. This time I've got this uh, tremolo uh, plugin from Sound Toys on this whole stack. So all the doubles, all the harmonies, they all um, have this tremolo applied to it equally. And then the response is this part. So obviously not form and shifted. And, it, and having just this one part form and shifted helps make this section a bit more of a conversation between these two parts as opposed to it just being um, the raw vocal tone the whole way through. That's the chorus. Let's look at the verse, uh, verse number two. Don't you miss the times that we share distant memories Remember, I know you can be so kind So this is pretty much the same from an arrangement perspective from verse 1. The main difference is I've just added this, the Moog bass from the chorus just continues playing. Um, it just helps create a bit more of a, a, a lift from the first verse, just so they don't sound exactly the same. Other than that, there's just this little two-bar gap right at the end of the verse, uh, the second verse. Um, just a few new chords, and just to, just to switch it up a little bit, um, I've added a few new chords down here. And then that leads us into chorus number two. Chorus number two, fairly similar to chorus one. The main addition here is that I've added this synth pad in the background that's just side chain to the drums. So this is with uh, this is made with the retro synth that just comes with Logic. It's probably one of my favorite synth plugins. It's it's pretty basic, but um, really easy to dial in sounds and modulate. And then I've got this followed by um, this saturation plug in the black box. And this just kind of creates a bit more of that upper harmonic content. So without it, and then with it, and then that's followed by uh, the micro shift from Sound Toys. And this kind of spreads the pad across the stereo spectrum. So instead of the pad sitting underneath the vocals, um, we have it kind of surrounding the vocals from the side. That's essentially chorus number two, otherwise it's pretty much the same as chorus one. At the end we have this two bar gap where all the high end synths disappear. And it's just the bass and this impact uh, effects. And this is kind of just to pull the track down a little bit before we enter this synth solo, which is essentially the peak of the mountain for the song. So let's just listen to that for a second. So here's the synth part. Uh, once again, I've bounced it out to audio. But if I zoom in, you'll see that um, similarly to the drums, it's it's not exactly on the grid. The drums are a bit before the grid. The synth solo is a little bit after the grid. The reason is um, this is a very like plucky synth, so it's got um, like fast transients, um, and so 
essentially what happens is you have this push and pull between the drums being a little bit ahead of the click and the solo being a little bit um, after the click. So they kind of play with each other, but the transients of one never falls on the transient of the other. So they kind of, they bounce off each other. <laughs> have the same synth pad from the chorus before coming through but we've just added this Mellotron playing the exact same thing now. And, and this just essentially helps balance out all these edgier electronic sounds with something a little bit warmer and vintagey. <laughs> You'll notice the uh, the vocal pad, the the ethereal vocal pad from the intro is underneath here as well, um, mainly because because this part's an instrumental section. I wanted to keep some sort of vocal element in it so that it um, remains a bit more consistent with the rest of the track and doesn't sound too much of a departure from the rest of the track. <laughs> This is actually the same exact chord progression as the verses. I've just added this extra flat seventh right at the end. So it goes down from the G, G flat major seven down to the E flat major seven. And that's the synth part. Then we arrive at this last section of the song, the kind of bridge outro. I'll give you a little snippet of that. Another day. But you're stuck in so it, this is kind of another step up from the synth solo before. We've got this extra pad that comes in just for this section. It sounds like this on its own. Once again, it's just the uh, stock retro synth from Logic. And we've also got, as you can see, the um, micro shift. So it does the same um, stereo widening to kind of surround the vocals. Um, from a vocal standpoint, we have another kind of call and response happening here. Let me just play that real quick. But you're stuck in your step away. Once again, uh, the response is form and shifted down, so it kind of creates that conversation between the two parts. It just kind of offsets the tonality of one of the vocals just to keep things a bit more interesting. And that's 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 kind of that section. Um, the song finishes off with this kind of extended ethereal outro, kind of similar to what's happening in the intro. We've got the same vocal pads from the intro. We've got the same um, acoustic samples from the intro um, the main thing that I've changed is that this bass comes in which plays this entirely new progression that we haven't heard yet in the song um, and this helps achieve um, essentially while the samples are doing the same thing as the intro because we have this new progression underneath it kind of changes the emotion behind the samples, so it kind of helps keep the song um, moving and feeling new here. And this this is like a little um, a voice recording, it's actually uh, my voice um, in Japanese and I just um, pitch shifted up a whole bunch and layered in this um, tape tape noise just to make it sound like a dusty old uh, speaker phone or a phone call. I've got like this double lock which is um, like a really grungy dirty distortion and then just another panner. This is um, Unfiltered Audio's biome. Um, it does all sorts of wacky effects but here I just kind of have it widening the stereo field. And then we kind of finish on this vocal pad just um, looping out with the feedback and then this drum loop, this drum break that slowly creeps in really quietly right at the end. And that's, that's essentially only you. So thanks for watching.